This face is called the Virata Parva as they stayed in the kingdom of Virata. Fascinating incidents and great insights into human character marked the 12 years of exile of the Pandavas. Then the 13th year began. Arjuna, the 13th year has begun and the time has come for us to part. We have to spend the next 12 months undiscovered by the spies of Duryodhana. God knows when the day will dawn, when we will all see each other again. Brother, do not worry. Bless us before we go. We can overcome all impediments and emerge victorious. Yudhishthira, we will stay in the same place. I cannot imagine parting from you all. Of course, but we cannot stay together. Arjuna, you are well conversant with the ways of the world. Where do you think it would be best for us to spend the 13th year? Brother, Yama, the Lord of Death has blessed us. We can easily pass the 12 months together without being discovered. There are many charming states for us to choose from. But Matsya country of King Virata is the best. It is a prosperous and charming kingdom. Virata, the king of Matsya, is very strong and he loves us much. He will not be won over Duryodhana. We can be sure that Virata will not allow himself to be browbeaten by him. Well then, what work can I see in the court of Virata? Arjuna feels comfortable at this point. For Yudhishthira had been a great king and it would be difficult to suggest an insignificant post for him. I am thinking of asking Virata to take me in his service as a courtier. I could delight him with my conversation and my dexterity at dice. I shall tell him that I was an intimate friend of Yudhishthira and learned these things while I was with him. Brother, I feel bad to hear all this. A king you are, and now to make a request to be taken as a courtier. Arjuna, don't worry. All our sufferings will soon come to an end. Bhima, what are you going to do? Yudhishthira was in tears at this question to Bhima. <laughs> Yudhishthira, I am thinking of taking up the job of a cook. You know that I am not only a great eater, but also an expert in cooking. Arjuna, what profession do you propose to take up? How can you hide your valor? Revered brother, I shall hide myself in the guise of a eunuch and serve the ladies of the court. I shall engage myself in menial work in the inner apartments of Virata's queen. I shall teach the women singing and dancing. How can you do that? I was cursed by Urvashi, the dancer in Lord Indra's court, that I should be a eunuch. But Lord Indra blessed me saying that I could be a eunuch for a year whenever I wished. I can use it now. Yudhishthira then turns to Nakula. I shall work in King Varatha's stables. I am good in training and looking after horses. Sahadeva. What are you going to do? Let Nakula look after the horses. I shall tend the cows. I shall guard Virata's cattle from the ravages of disease and the attacks of wild beasts. Finally, Yudhishthira looked at Draupadi. She was sad that the erstwhile queen would have to take up some petty work. Draupadi understood his grief. My lord, do not feel bad. I shall be an attendant of the princess. I shall represent that I had served Princess Draupadi in Yudhishthira's court. Yudhishthira adopted the garb of a hermit. Arjuna transformed himself into a eunuch. Others also disguised themselves suitably. But no disguise could take away their natural charm, grace and nobility of appearance. After they went to King Virata, seeking service in his court. Yudhishthira became the king's companion and spent his days playing dice with him. Bhima worked as the chief cook. Arjuna assumed the name of 
Brihannala and taught dancing and music to Princess Uttara, the daughter of Virata. Nakula looked after the horses and Sahadeva looked after the cows and bulls. The Princess Draupadi passed her days serving Virata's queen, Sudeshna. She lived in the inner apartments of the palace as a maid. Kichaka, the brother of Sudeshna, was the commander-in-chief of Virata's army. He was an arrogant villain. One day, he came to meet his sister in the palace and saw Draupadi there. Welcome, Kichaka. Surprising to see you here now, but how are you? Sister, I'm fine. Who's this beauty? Kichika, keep quiet. How is my new maid? But she does not appear to be just a maid. Draupadi leaves the room. Shh, Kichika, what is this? I will meet you later. Kichika leaves the palace but started troubling Draupadi. You're so pretty. You can be my queen, Ang Lady. I'm a married woman and my husband is a Gandharva. Coming from a royal family, how can you covet another person's wife? If you do not listen to me, I will marry you by force. Draupadi could not tolerate this any longer. She went to Bhima and told him about Kichaka and the demands he was making. I cannot bear this any longer. You must get rid of this wretch at once. Draupadi cried and showed her hands to Bhima. Seeing the palms of her hands, Bhima became speechless with sorrow. There were blisters on her palms due to the manual work she had done. I will kill Kichaka here and now. Be careful. We should not be recognized. All right. Send him to the dancing hall tomorrow night. I will be there. Draupadi met Kichaka the next day. Have you decided? Are you prepared to marry me? I will tell you tonight if you come to the dancing hall after everyone has gone to sleep. Kichaka was delighted. He thought that his efforts were ultimately bearing fruit. Nightfall. Kichaka went to the dancing hall. Bhima was dressed in a woman's wardrobe with a veil. My dear, why do you cover your face still? Kichaka approached the figure and lifted the veil. Bhima sprang up and pounced on him. A tremendous fight took place between them. In the end, Bhima killed Kichaka, putting a full stop to the evil career of a wicked and powerful man. He then went home with the satisfaction of having done a good job. Draupadi shouted and called the guards. Kichaka came to molest me despite my many warnings. He did not listen. My husband is a Gandharva. He came here and killed him. The people of the kingdom became scared of her. The queen called her after complaints from her people. Your Highness, I have not done any mistake. Please forgive me. Young lady, I give you a good job in this palace. But my misfortune, my brother and commander-in-chief of this kingdom has been killed. He is not an ordinary person. If there is some problem here again, I will be answerable to the people of this country. You may please leave this palace now. Draupadi was in tears. There was only one month for the exile to end. Where could she go now? Madam, please help me. Please permit me to stay here at least for a month. I will move away from here after that. All right, you should leave after a month. The Pandavas grew tense after the incident. Duryodhana's palace. 
Dushasana. This is the 13th year. I have been trying to search for the Pandavas everywhere, but I am not able to find them at all. Duryodhana, I think they might just have perished. No way. I know about them. Are they fools to die? Duryodhana, I am sure they are alive. All five of them will be at the same place only. You are correct. Bhima and Arjuna cannot keep quiet. They will prove their skill in some way or the other. So better be on the watch out. News reached Duryodhana that the powerful Kichaka had been killed by some Gandharva on account of a woman. Karna, did you hear the news that Kichaka has been killed? That's what surprises me, Duryodhana. Karna, there are only two people who can kill Kichaka. Yes, one is Jarasandha and the other is Bhima. You are right. It is said that Kichaka died because of a woman. Could she be Draupadi? Karna, the king of Virata does not like us. I think the Pandavas could have gone there, thinking that we will not search for them there. I agree, Duryodhana. But how to find this out? Susarma does not like Virata. We will support Susarma and make him wage a war against Virata. If the Pandavas are hiding in Virata's kingdom on account of loyalty to Virata, they will come out in the open to rescue him. Ah, ah, excellent! If they reveal themselves before their 13th year, they are lost. Once again, I can make them go to the forest for 13 years. <laughs> How do you like my plan, Karna? Excellent, Duryodhana. I will call upon Susarma right away. Susarma was informed about the battle and he was too happy. The next day in the court. My greetings to all elders. You all know well that the powerful Kichaka is no more. There is only one man who can kill Kichaka and that is Bhima. Therefore, I suspect that the Pandavas are hiding in the kingdom of Virata. Susarma is an enemy of Virata. We will support Susarma and make him wage a war against Virata. If the Pandavas come out and fight, then they should be taught a lesson. Duryodhana, is it necessary to pick up a fight now? I do agree with Pitamaha. Guru, but why do you want to support the Pandavas so much? Duryodhana, your Guru has not supported anyone other than you. Duryodhana, what I wanted to say is that the 13 years of exile are coming to an end. They will come back here any moment. Once they come back, you are going to give back their kingdom. So why engage in a war now? What? Ah! Ah! Biggest joke, Pitamaha. I have never told anyone that I am giving back their kingdom. Why should we give? Karna, why do you instigate Duryodhana? Why should I? Duryodhana knows everything. Guru, I will not give even a speck of dust to the Pandavas. Bhishma and Drona grow sad at this expression of greed and hatred. Duryodhana, if we are not going to give them land, then war will break out. We will lose everything. Duryodhana, if this war breaks out, all of us may perish. Guru, is there anyone more powerful than my Guru Drona or my Pitamaha? How can we ever lose? Duryodhana, you are underestimating Arjuna. Karna is more than equal to Arjuna. I don't mean that. Guru's favorite student is Arjuna. He will not face him in battle. Karna. Guru, Karna speaks the fact. Bhima understood the situation. Duryodhana, you make the preparations for the battle against war and we will take care. Thank you, Pitamaha. Karna. Make the necessary preparations for the war. Ask Susarma to attack Virata and we will follow him. The coat of Virata.
the king was confused and worried. Yudhishthira was with him as an advisor. Great king, please do not worry. I have been with Pandavas and I am good in archery. If you can give me weapons, I can handle them. How can you do that? The chief cook in your court is known to me. He is good in wrestling and archery. Send your troops with me. I can take care. All right, let's proceed. Except Arjuna, Yudhishthira took the other three brothers with him to the battlefield. A huge wall broke out between the two sides. Yudhishthira and his men fought fiercely and drove away Susarna. King Virata was extremely pleased as he himself did not expect the victory. Kanka, excellent! Marvelous! I am greatly pleased. Let's return to the kingdom. I will make you my Prime Minister. Great King, you have encouraged me in many ways all these days. I greatly value your support. Virata, Yudhishthira, Bhima, Nakula and Sahadeva along with the troops were returning to the kingdom. In the meantime, Duryodhana invaded the kingdom of Vitara. On seeing the sudden attack, the soldiers ran to Uttara, the son of King Virata and the prince. My lord, the army of the Gauravas has invaded our kingdom. Prince Uttara was a young lad and was given more to bravado than to bravery. He was actually scared to face the enemy. They have come to capture our kingdom in the absence of our king. My lord, please save us. If you don't, we will all be taken as slaves. The Gauravas, yes, yes. The soldiers looked puzzled. Please order us what to do. Go away. Don't trouble me. The ladies made fun of the prince. The ministers looked confused. Arjuna, in the form of eunuch Brihannala, approached the prince. Great prince, the Gauravas have entered our kingdom. If we do not decide now, we will land in a problem. How can I face all Gauravas? Do you know who they are and how many? Your majesty, I can drive the chariot well, and I am also well versed in archery. Don't bother. If you give me the weapons, I can handle them. Hi, what do you think of yourself? Don't you think that we are outnumbered? What can we do against an army? Great Prince, if we do not go now, even the maids of the court will make fun. Brihannala, I will come with you. We will certainly make the Gauravas take to their heels. Arjuna, dressed like a woman, drove the chariot with Uttara in it to the battlefield. As they approached it, Arjuna stopped the chariot and got down. Dear Prince, please climb up the tree and get the bag hanging on it. Hi, how can I get that? If you want to win, please do as I say. The Prince climbed the tree and got the bag. Arjuna opened the bag. The weapons in the bag shone with extraordinary brightness. Prince Uttara was shocked to see the weapons. He closed his eyes as they had a dazzling brilliance. The prince felt as if his body was filled with new energy. Brihannala, what are these weapons? Who are you? After seeing these weapons, I feel that I have got new strength. Prince Uttara, I am Arjuna, the third brother of Pandavas. Arjuna. The prince fainted. Arjuna restored him to consciousness. Wake up, Uttara. We have to go to the battlefield. The prince woke up.
and his eyes were filled with tears. He fell at the feet of Arjuna. Great master, why are you in this costume? Prince Uttara, in our 13 years of exile, we have to spend the last year in Cognito. The ascetic in your father's court is my elder brother Yudhishthira. The cook is Bhima. Oh my God! Nakula and Sahadeva are in the army taking care of the horses and cattle. Draupadi is your mother's attendant. So that's the reason why my father was able to outwit Susabma in battle. Now I understand. Yesterday our period of exile ended. That is why I have revealed my identity to you today. Great warrior, if I had spoken anything wrong, please forgive me. It's time, let's move to the battlefield. They approached the battlefield. The sun was rising slowly. The mist was slowly clearing. Beyond the mist stood the huge army of the Kauravars. Master, please look at their army and look at our army. I am the only son of my mother. Don't worry. The Kaurava army had Bhishma, Drona, Duryodhana and Karna standing like lions in the battlefield. Arjuna took out his coat and blew. Who is the lady blowing the conch? Duryodhana, I think it must be Arjuna. Arjuna in female attire. Look how tall she is. A lady cannot be this tall. In the meantime, Arjuna sends two arrows to the feet of Bhishma and Drona as a mark of respect. It is Arjuna. Yes, there is not mistaking him. The one and only Arjuna. Even in the battlefield, our Guru praises his favorite student. Drona cast a stern glance at Karna. <laughs> the Pandavas have revealed themselves before their time. My plan is a great success. They are gone. Duryodhana, what do you mean? Pitamaha, if the Pandavas revealed themselves before their last day of exile, they have to go back to the forest for another 13 years. Their period of exile is over. Yes, their period was over yesterday. No way. Your calculation is wrong, Duryodhana. Even if they reveal themselves now, they can come and ask you for their kingdom any moment. Duryodhana's face turned red with anger. Duryodhana, don't worry. We will finish them here. As Duryodhana approached forward, Bhishma stopped him. Duryodhana, there is no point fighting with Arjuna and others now. If you start the fight now and if you lose, you may have to forcibly give your kingdom to the Pandavas. Pidamaha, I am a Kshatriya. Do you think I am a coward? Duryodhana, I know full well that you are not a person to care for your life. Since we have stepped in, we cannot go back without fighting. We will take care of the troops. You leave for Hastinapur. Don't fight with Arjuna now. Duryodhana, what Pitamaha says is also correct. You need to fight with these people now. We will take care of them. Duryodhana took his chariot and returned to Hastinapur. But Arjuna drove towards Duryodhana. Where is Arjuna? He is not coming towards us. He is chasing Duryodhana. Let us wait. The army troops stood still, not knowing what to do. A fierce battle was fought between Arjuna and Duryodhana.
returned to Virata's kingdom. News reached King Virata that his son Uttara was returning home victorious after his victory over the mighty Kauravas. King Virata called Yudhishthira to play the game of dice. Kanka, let's celebrate my son's victory. Let's play the game. Come on. Kanka, what a massive victory. My son has emerged victorious. He has beaten the Kauravas. This is the greatest moment in my life. Yudhishthira knew well that it was only because of Arjuna that Uttara was able to win the battle. My lord, Brihannala who has gone along with the prince is not an ordinary person. He is excellent in archery and all other types of warfare. Kanka, stop this. I am talking about my son's victory and you are praising Brihannala, a mere dancer. I made the remark because I knew about Brihannala before. Virata, who was not able to tolerate this, threw the dice on the ground. One of the dice hit the cheek of Yudhishthira and he started to bleed. The king did not expect this. Oh, blood on your cheek! It's all right. Just then, Uttara entered the king's room. He was shocked to see blood on Yudhishthira's face. As he knew, who he was. The king embraced his son. Uttara, you are a great emperor today. You have driven away the mighty Kauravas and have brought back all our troops. I am proud to be your father. My battle with Susarma is nothing compared to your success. Father, what is this wound on Kanka's face? A small accident. My lord, let me leave now. I will join you later. My greetings to the victorious prince. Yudhishthira left the room. What happened? He was constantly pressing Behanala when he was talking about your victory. Father, do you know who he is? Whoever he might be. How can he keep pressing an Anuj and a dancer when I am applauding my son's great victory in battle? Father, it's only because of Brihanala I was able to win today. Without Brihanala, I would have not come back alive. Brihanala is none other than the great Arjuna. What? Uttara explained everything to his father. In the meantime, the Pandavas came in their original attire along with Draupadi and presented themselves before the king. The king embraced Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira, I am sorry for my actions. You are a great man to whom the whole world looks up to. I am really sorry for the way I behave towards you. Forgive me, sir. I consider myself blessed by your presence here. Great King, when we approach you for work, you were kind enough to employ us and give us a roof over our heads and honorable work as well. Even when Kichaka was killed, you gave shelter to Draupadi. We are thankful to you for all the freedom you gave us for a whole year. I'm sure we would not have got this love and help anywhere else. Great Yudhishthira, why don't you stay with us as a guest for some more time in my kingdom? My dear king, already we have spent 13 years away from our kingdom. It's high time we went back. It is high time we taught Duryodhana a lesson. What Arjuna has taught him just now is not at all sufficient for him. Pandavaputra, anytime, anywhere, if you send a word to me, I'll be at your service. Your Majesty, thanks for your help and support. Arjuna, I have a small request. Please tell me. You have taught my daughter Uttara music and dance. I request you to take her as your wife. Arjuna smiles. I am old enough to be her father. But as I cannot turn down your request, I can wed her to my son and take her as my daughter-in-law. Arjuna consults with his brothers and they heartily accept the proposal. My son Abhimanyu will marry Uttara. The king was immensely happy. I am greatly pleased. Thank you very much Arjuna. The marriage of Uttara and Abhimanyu 
took place in a grand manner. The Pandavas continued their journey towards Hastinapur. The Palace of Hastinapur. Yudhishthira enters the court. Greetings to the great king. Respects to grandsire, Bhishma Pitamaha. He bowed before everyone. Bhishma was immensely happy to see Yudhishthira after 13 years. Dronacharya, see how forest life has treated Yudhishthira. Yes, Pitamaha, how healthy he used to look before. Thirteen years of exile and sufferings have changed him a lot. I feel very sorry for him. Drona, I have brought up these kids. He was meant to rule this kingdom. And now this. But he is the true son of Dharma. Duryodhana could not stand the sight of Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira, so you have come back. But why so early? Duryodhana, our 13 years of exile is over. But you have not kept your promise. What is it? You all have revealed your identity before your exile ended. No, Duryodhana. When Arjuna revealed himself, our period of exile was over. You are wrong. Duryodhana, there is some mistake in our calculation. He is correct. Pidamaha, let us leave that. But why has he come here now? Duryodhana, since we have completed our period of exile, we have come back to get our kingdom. Duryodhana became furious. Whose kingdom is it? It's mine. Don't ever say that it's yours. Mind your words. Yudhishthira kept quiet. Give them their kingdom, Duryodhana. You need not give anything more. Ah, they lost everything 13 years ago. And now it's all yours. They have to go back to the forest. King Dhritarashtra was hearing all this silently. Karna is right. Everything is mine now. I cannot make over our kingdom to mendicants roaming the forests. Duryodhana, at least give them a part of the kingdom they held previously. They too belong to our royal family. Where do you expect them to go? I should part with part of the kingdom. <laughs> I will not give even a speck of dust to Yudhishthira and his brothers. Not even a speck of land on which a needle can stand. Not even that! <laughs> Yudhishthira did not speak a word. I will not give anything to him. If he wants, let him wage war for his kingdom. A war? Drona was shocked at the blatant way in which Duryodhana was proposing war. What do you mean? They don't have anything. They don't even have roof over their heads. How do you expect them to wage war against a great empire? Without any support. How will they face a war? The Pandavas are the greatest heroes of the world. They don't even require an army. <laughs> you are right, Karna. Arjuna the Great and Bhima the Mighty are equal to ten huge armies. Why do they need an army? Bhishma realized that it was futile 
to speak any further and kept silent. Jonah too resorted to a stony silence. Yudhishthira, I cannot give you anything for free. You lost it all as you gambled away your kingdom. If you want back your kingdom, you will have to wage a war. Yudhishthira did not speak a word. He went back and told the matter to his brothers. Atrocious! I knew that demon Duryodhana would do this. I should have killed him 13 years back. I kept quiet only because of you. Brother, you even asked us to save him from the Gandharvas in the forest. We did save him then, but look at his behavior now. He has ill-treated Yudhishthira like this. What a heartless brute he is. Draupadi heard all this, but kept looking out of the window as if she were intent on something there. Draupadi, what happened? What's going on out there? Nothing. I'm not able to take all this. My honor and dignity were trampled upon by Duryodhana 13 years back. The burn has left an ugly scar on my mind. The insult burns like a fire within my heart. I have borne that as well as the difficult life of the forest. What did I do to deserve all this agony and hardship? You are our greatest strength and support. If you break down, what strength will we have? Draupadi wipes away the tears flowing down her eyes. All right, let's face it. Let us wage war for our kingdom. A war means an army, money, power. What do we have? My Lord, when Sri Krishna is there, why do we have to suffer? Sri Krishna will definitely help us. There is no doubt about that. But when Pitamaha, Dronacharya and other great people are with them, what can we do? My Lord, please do not mistake me. Leave your problems to Sri Krishna. If it were not for him, I would not be alive this day. Draupadi turns to Arjuna. My Lord, please go and meet Sri Krishna. He will show you the way. Arjuna goes to meet Krishna. In the meantime, Shakuni advises Duryodhana to meet Krishna and seek his support. Duryodhana too reaches Dwaraka to meet Krishna. When both reached Dwaraka, Sri Krishna was taking a nap. Duryodhana went and sat near his head. And Arjuna stood near his feet. Krishna woke up and first saw Arjuna who was standing near his feet. He turned back and saw Duryodhana sitting near his head. Krishna smiles. Welcome great King Duryodhana and great hero Arjuna. It's a pleasant surprise to see both of you at the same time here. Krishna, we are your cousins. Without war, there is no question of giving any kingdom to the Pandavas. I need your support in the war. I came here for that. Duryodhana, when I first woke up, I saw only Arjuna. So how can I give the support to you? Krishna, I thought you would be impartial. Though everyone told me that you liked the Pandavas more than the Kauravas, I was convinced that a great man like you would be unbiased. Duryodhana, for me both of you are equal. Tell me what you want. I need your support. 
Krishna looks at Arjuna. He stands calm without uttering a word. All right, I have the best weapons in my army. Arjuna, you tell me whether you need me or my weapons and army. Krishna, I need your support. I don't want anything else. What about you, Duryodhana? All right, Krishna, I will be happy to take your army and weaponry. Duryodhana thanks Krishna and leaves. Arjuna. I have given away my army and weapons to Duryodhana. What do you think I can do empty-handed? Krishna, you are mightier than a weapon, greater than any army, and more loving than a mother. What more do I want? Krishna hugs Arjuna. I will be your charioteer in the war. Is it fine for you? Arjuna falls at the feet of Krishna. My lord, I never expected this. What more do I need? There were tears in the eyes of Arjuna. Krishna wipes his tears. Arjuna, son of Indra, the greatest and the most admirable hero, do not worry. You will win the world. A proper lesson will be taught to Gauravas. Arjuna thanked Krishna and left. He is in the picture of confident calm. Kunti Devi, mother of the Pandavas, comes to know of the war and worries about her sons. She even knew well that Karna is her eldest son born to Lord Surya. Karna has the weapon, Brahmastra, given by Lord Brahma. That weapon has the power to kill the person it is aimed at. Kunti knew well that if that weapon is used against any of her sons, they would be killed. She wants Karna to join with her other sons. She reaches the palace of Karna without anyone's knowledge. Karna was shocked to see Kunti Devi. He did not understand the reason for her coming. On seeing Kunti reaching the palace of Karna, One of the guards informed the news to Duryodhana. Duryodhana reached the palace of Karna, but on hearing the conversation, he stood outside. Welcome, Godmother. Greetings to you. Kunti comes near Karna and fondles his cheeks. Tears flow from her eyes. Karna was shocked. Mother, any problem? Why are you crying? I'm crying for my sins. If your sons see you talking to me, they will quarrel with you. Karna, nobody can see me here as I have come by myself. I came to tell you a secret. Karna looked confused. Duryodhana was curious. He wanted to go inside but controlled himself. Karna, do you know the secret of your birth? Karna looked puzzled. My son, you are not the son of Adirata the charioteer. You are my son. Kunti broke down when she revealed the secret to Karna. Karna could not believe this. He was shocked and his face turned pale. Karna, when I was in Sage Durvasa's ashram, he gave me a mantra. If I uttered the mantra calling upon its presiding God, I would get a child from that God. Playfully to test the mantra, I called upon Lord Surya, the powerful sun god. The next moment he came down and blessed me with a child. You are that child. You were born with golden armor and earrings. Karna's face 
turns red. I did not know what to do since I was not married then. I placed you in a box and let you flow with the river. How cruel I have been. Adrita found you and adopted you. The Pandyas are your brothers and you are their elder brother. Karna was in tears to hear this. Kunti wipes his tears. You are a true Kshatriya. You are not of low status. None can equal your charm and valor. I have revealed to you the secret that was killing me all these years. Kunti hugs Karna. Mother, I am happy to know that I am your son and my father is the sun god. Karna could not speak anything further. He was sad to see his mother. What can I do for you, mother? My son, if war breaks out, I don't want to lose you or the Pandavas. I want you to join with the Pandavas. They are your brothers. Duryodhana's face turns red with anger. Karna smiles. Mother, you might have given birth to me, but I owe my kingship and status to Duryodhana. I am even prepared to sacrifice my life for him. In fact, fighting for him and dying for him will give me the greatest happiness. Karna, Karna, why do you speak like this? I am sorry, mother. I have been humiliated many a time as a son of a mere charioteer. But though born in a Kshatriya race, Duryodhana did not reject me. He treated me like one of his brothers. He patronized you because you are skilled like Arjuna. I am sorry, mother. You are wrong. If he wants, he can train thousands like me. Drona's son, Ashwatthama, is also skilled. Many of them are skilled. Duryodhana likes me. He has given me the status, the wealth and the respect that the princes and kings enjoy in their palaces. He has not doubted me even once. So you don't want to join with Pandavas? I have to be true to my benefactor and friend. Kunti prepared to leave with tears in her eyes. Karna, before leaving, will you give me something I ask for? Karna wiped her tears. Yes, mother. Ask me what you want. You have the Brahmastra and can kill anyone with it. Karna looks confused. I request you not to use it more than once in the war. All right, mother. I promise you that I will not use the weapon more than once and out of the Pandavas, I will fight only with Arjuna. The others, I will not attack. Are you happy now? I bless you. May you have a long life. Kunti leaves the palace. The moment she leaves, Duryodhana steps in. Karna is shocked to see Duryodhana in tears for the first time in his life. Duryodhana, what happened? Duryodhana hugs Karna. Karna, I don't even want to win the war. But I don't want to lose a friend like you. I heard everything. You are more than a mother to me. Karna hugs Duryodhana. Duryodhana. 